With the many potential dangers that one could encounter on an African safari, from lions to crocodiles, it's almost ironic that the animal responsible for the most human fatalities is not even a predator. The hippopotamus is known to be one of the most dangerous animals on the African continent, and in March of 96, safari guide Paul Templer discovered just how ferocious these massive herbivores can be when he ended up waist deep in the mouth of a hippo. On a Saturday morning in Zimbabwe, southern Africa, Paul Templer's day started with a sense of foreboding. A close friend of his who was supposed to be leading a canoe safari had come down with malaria, and Templer was the man assigned to be his replacement as a lead guide. Templer recalled having a feeling of trepidation that day, like something was just not quite right. The opportunity, however, was a great one, as he was to lead a tour group down one of the most beautiful stretches of river in the world. The Zambezi River is the fourth longest river in Africa, serving as the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Its basin supports a vast wilderness area that boasts a wide variety of game, bird life, and freshwater species, including a healthy population of hippos. Now as mentioned, hippos are non-predatory animals. They subsist on a diet predominantly made up of plants, and as nocturnal animals, they graze on the banks at night and spend their days in the water. But what's more important to understand is that hippopotamuses are highly territorial and aggressive by nature. These qualities, combined with its size and length of its tusks, make the hippo more dangerous than some of the fiercest predators. The safari group was made up of six guests, three apprentice guides, and Templar, who as previously mentioned, was the lead guide. Everything was going smoothly, and everyone was having a great time until the group would suddenly encounter a pod of about a dozen hippos, wallowing in the shallows. To the group, the hippos seemed relaxed and calm at this time, as they were a safe distance away. Templer, who was leading the way in the river, got the group together and pulled up next to the hippos. They then sat in their canoes, watching them and talking about them briefly, before moving off. One of the guests even asked if it was true that hippos killed more people every year than every other animal which Templar confirmed to be true, and just as they made their way around the pod, one of the canoes had fallen back and was heading towards deeper waters. Suddenly, there was a loud thud amid the crashing water, as a hippo would make contact with the back of the canoe of one of the guides. Evans Namasengo was Templar's 26-year-old apprentice who'd been following him at the back of the group. Templar would turn just in time to see Namasengo's canoe hurled about four feet in the air by the hippo who was breaching out of the water. Namasengo was catapulted out of the canoe and was carried by the current toward a mother hippo and her calf. Knowing that he had to get to Namasengo fast, Templar wouldn't have time to drop off his guests. He would instead yell to one of the other guides to get everyone to safety as he turned his canoe and started paddling towards Namasengo in the river. He would then suddenly notice a bow-shaped wave coming toward him, and judging by its size, he knew it had to have been either a hippo or a really large crocodile. It was at this point that Templar would begin slapping his pad in the water, which seemed to have halted the approaching animal. Templar would finally get to Namasengo and reach over with a helping hand, in what was like a moment made for Hollywood. Namasengo had been reaching out of the water, and the two men's fingers would almost touch, when suddenly the water between them erupted, and everything went dark and quiet. Templar was head first down the throat of a hippo, up to his waist. With the warm and wet darkness engulfing him, and incredible pressure on his lower back, he was also not able to move. Now it is worth mentioning that Templar was not a small guy and he'd been so far down the hippo's throat that it ended up gagging and spitting him out. This would allow Templar to grab hold of the hippo's tusks to pull himself out. Just as he broke through the surface, gasping for air, he would come face to face with a stunned Namasengo. We need to get out of here, he said to his frightened apprentice, which is when Templar started swimming to safety. However, it was at this time that something would tell him to turn around, which is when upon doing so, he would notice that Namasengo wasn't following behind him. In fact, he was still where Templar left him, with his eyes wide open, frozen in terror and panic as he tried to stay afloat. Templar then turned back to get him and was moving in for a classic lifesaver's hold, when there was abruptly yet another burst of water as he was hit from below, finding himself once again waist deep inside the hippo's throat. This time it was his lower body, and the hippo had been much more aggressive, thrashing him around. Templar recalled that all he could do during this part of the attack was try his best not to drown. To his good fortune, the hippo would then spit him out again, but Templar knew that it wasn't over yet, and he had to get out of the water. He again then tried swimming to safety, and was making good progress when he looked over at mid-stroke and saw the hippo charging toward him with its mouth wide open. This time the hippo made a direct hit and chomped down on his abdomen, leaving his head, neck, and shoulders hanging out of one side of its mouth, with his legs dangling out of the other. By now the hippo had launched an aggressive attack, and at one point it would even fling him in the air, contorting his body into a half twist. And when he fell back, the hippo caught him in its mouth again and bit down so hard that Templar thought he was being bitten in half. One of the eyewitnesses who was a guest at the safari would later state that the scene was like watching a vicious dog trying to rip a ragdoll apart. 
At this point for Templar, everything felt like it was happening in slow motion, which at this time was strangely fortunate for him because it allowed him time to think through his next moves. Moments later, Templar would then grab on to the tusks that were boring through him, realizing that holding on to them would to an extent stop his flesh from tearing as the hippo thrashed him about. Each time he was dunked underwater, Templar held his breath, and every time he surfaced, he would gasp for air. This went on for a while, but then the hippo would finally grow tired and dive for deeper water. Templar recalls that at this point he was just lying at the bottom of the river, looking up with the lower half of his body still inside the hippo's mouth. He remembers seeing green and blue as the sunlight broke the water surface, but around him the water was tinged red with his blood, causing him to wonder whether he was going to drown or bleed to death. In a later interview, Templar would speak about the random thoughts going through his mind before the hippo finally lurched towards the surface and spat him out for the third time. Fortunately, another guide named Mac was at the surface in the safety of the kayak after having courageously paddled toward the angry hippo as it waged its attack. Mac and Templar managed to get up onto a rock, knowing that the massive hippo wouldn't be able to climb up after them. Mac did whatever he could to patch Templar's horrific wounds with emergency first aid supplies and pieces of fabric he'd ripped off from their shirts. He then pulled Templar back into one of the canoes, at which point they'd head on to try to find Namasengo. By this time, it was already getting dark, and they knew the chances of anyone coming to look for them were slim. To make matters worse, Templar was in bad shape. He was in immense pain, watching his blood swirl around the water at the bottom of the canoe, and what was worse was that the hippo was still bumping against them. For a moment, Templar thought to himself, do I stay or do I go? He even contemplated shutting his eyes and allowing himself to drift off and let go, but he would manage to resist this urge and will himself to fight through it. And at that moment, he was finally overcome with an incredible sense of peace beyond anything he had ever experienced. Ironically, the moment he'd made this choice to fight to survive, his body was overcome with more pain than he ever thought possible. He later said that the pain was so intense that he wished he had made another choice, but by then not even that seemed to be an option any longer. The two men would eventually make it out to shore, but they'd failed to track down Namasengo. It took eight long hours to get Templar to a hospital that had a surgeon who could operate on him, and the damage was substantial. He would have 38 major bite wounds, and his left arm had been crushed to a pulp as he was degloved from the elbow down which means that his skin and flesh from that point had been torn off. He had also sustained a punctured lung, which Mac had smartly sealed with a saran wrap from a plate of snacks. Not to mention a tusk had also skewered his foot, tearing out his Achilles tendon. And to make matters even worse, he also had deep bite wounds throughout his shoulders, and in fact both of his arms were barely attached. The doctors would also mention that he'd been bitten through the back of his neck, as well as his head, all the way through to the front of his face, missing the top of his spinal column by an inch. Templar remembered acting out and feeling sorry for himself when the surgeon cut his arm off. He also remembered the surgeon saying to him that he was the sum of his choices, and that he was exactly who, what, and where he chose to be in life. Needless to say, at the time, Templar was less than impressed by the doctor's comments, feeling that it was easier to blame everyone and everything else for what had happened to him. But over time the surgeon's words would sink in, and Templar realized that things were always going to happen, and that the one thing that no one could ever take away was his choice over what happens next. Templar would go on to believe that this is the lesson the hippo taught him on the fateful day that he found himself facing death in the mouth of one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. <laughs>